Hello all, welcome to our next tutorial on Vivado. In the previous video, we saw how to do a combination circuit design using Vivado. So in this tutorial, we'll be going to see how to design a sequential circuit. That means circuit switch with memory. That means they'll be using some clock signals and how to do such designs using Vivado. So again, I'm starting with a very simple design. So my aim is to make a running LED display, uh, not exactly a display, just a running LED. So what I need is, suppose we start from this LED, this LED will be on, everything else will be off, then this LED will turn on, this will turn off, so on and so forth. So you'll feel like this LED is uh, going in a circular fashion. Now, one additional feature I want to add is I should be able to specify initially which LED or LEDs should be turned on. For example, maybe I want to turn on these two LEDs and my circuit should be able to switch both LEDs, two LEDs at a time on and two LEDs should be running in a circular fashion. Okay, that's my aim. So that initial state of LED I am going to specify using these uh, dip switches. So if I turn on these two dip switches, that means initially these two LEDs should be on, then subsequently next two LEDs, next two LEDs, so on and so forth. So I will I will configure my initial status using these dip switches. Then maybe I'll press this, this push button so that the circuit initializes using these two uh, dip switches and when I release this button the LEDs should run around. Okay, so this button more or less acts as a reset signal to my circuit. So this is my reset. This is how I am going to specify my initial state and these are the LEDs which will be basically my output. Okay, again these five push buttons they are also connected to the PL part of the chip and as we discussed in the previous video, LEDs as well as the dip switches, they are also already connected with the chip. Now one additional thing that we need is the clock, which is actually coming from a crystal from the back side of the board. You can check it. So that board, it comes with a 50 megahertz onboard crystal. Okay, So that external clock is running at 50 megahertz. So do keep it in mind. Okay, so I'm um, starting from where we stopped last time. So I'm going to start a new project. So I'll go and choose file and new project. And the same wizard comes up. And I'm going to call this as a running LED as my project name. Now remember your previous project is saved in this location. Now if you directly create a new project at the same location, all the files will get mixed up. So one, one way to avoid it is to click this option, create project subdirectory. That means he will create a new folder with this name inside this folder and all the files will be saved in this subfolder. Okay, so you can have a common place for all your Vivado project and inside that common place, each project is saved in separate directories. Okay, so go ahead next to RTL project. I don't have any source, I don't have any constraint. You go ahead, choose board, choose that board, next and finish. Now he's asking whether you want to close your current project, yes. Okay, now the new project comes up. So same as before, I'll choose add sources. I will choose create file and let me call it uh, running led.v. Okay. Okay. Now, as usual, you have to specify what are your inputs and output. Now, of course, this is a sequential circuit. As I mentioned before, the new status of the LED, which LEDs are turned on or which LEDs are turned off, depends upon its previous state because we are doing a shift operation, circular shift operation, essentially. So this is a sequential circuit. 
so you need a clock sequence to do it so i will declare input clock now remember the weight lock rule yeah, you don't have to call a clock signal as clock you can call it by whatever name you want but uh, i'm going to call it clock and i also mentioned i'm going to use this button as my reset because i will specify my initial condition using these light switches then i press this button so that system initializes using whichever button or whichever slide switch i have chosen so i need a reset so input reset now i have those uh, eight slide switches which are giving my initial condition so let me call in its state and i also have output seven down to zero led right okay now let's go to the code so this is sequential so you need always block always at power search clock so my requirement is if i press reset my output or the or the leds should be initialized with this init state okay else the new led state is a right shifted version of the previous led that means the rightmost led that means position zero will become the leftmost and every other leds will be shifted right by one position so basically this is how you do a right operation in with look okay so this is by default means 7 down to 0 you don't have to explicitly say it it is implicit when you write led it is led 7 down to 0 so led 7 down to 0 is led 0 concatenated with led 7 down to 1 so remember this is our concatenation operation so 7th led will be same as 0th led and 6th will be same as seventh so and and so forth so essentially this is a right shift operation now remember our rule all the signals on the left hand side inside always block should be declared as reg type that's why we were is already giving you error here even without running synthesis so that's a good feature of viewer so you can keep your mouse here and it shows like procedure assignment to non-register led is not permitted left hand side should be reg integer time gen one type okay so it should be declared as reg type output reg seven down to zero LED. now everything looks good no errors so go ahead and save it and run synthesis now this design should be consuming some LUTs and flip flop at least it should consume eight flip flops because we have eight flip flops whose outputs will be connected to the led so we have a eight bit shift register which require eight flip flop now we have some initialization condition here now depending upon how we want to does it uh, you may or may not require LUTs one way is to directly connect this reset signal to the synchronous input to those flip-flop if that is the case you don't need any additional LUT if it is different let's see so he has finished synthesis you can click open synthesis and We can look at the schematic how the circuit looks like okay this is how the circuit looks like you can see it is consuming some LUT this is your clock going to the clock buffer then all these are all these are flip-flops okay FDRE they are all flip-flop and this is the clock input to the flip-flop and you can see the clock signal goes to all the flip-flop and there should be eight flip-flop in addition to that those LUTs are there which are used for initializing our D flip-flop if you go to project summary click the Sigma and if you come down 
and you can look at the resource utilization so it is saying your circuit require eight flip flop out of 106,000 okay four LUTs out of 53,200 18 input output pin because you have eight slide switches eight LEDs one clock one reset which makes it 18 and a clock buffer because whenever you use a clock signal in your design a special buffer is connected to the clock input clock called the clock buffer or global buffer buff g stands for global buffer okay and these fpga they support up to 32 global buffer that means you can connect up to 32 different clocks but on this particular z board we have only one onboard clock for the pl part there are other clocks going to the processor. We'll see it later. Fine. Again, at this point of time, this is just an estimation. The real utilization will be available only after implementation. Okay. So the next step, same as before, you have to do IO planning. So if by default IO planning is not selected, choose IO planning and you start giving the package bits. Okay. So LED zero is T22 directly entering by looking at the board. This is T21. It's U22. This is U21. It's V22. This is W22. This is U19. And this is U14. Okay. And these are basically the slide switches. So let's enter their position in location. This is F22. This is G22. This is H22. F21. H19 H18 H17 and M15 I haven't run simulation for this design. If you're interested, you can go ahead and run it and check whether things are working fine or not. Now, one more, or actually two more pins we have to enter. The one for clock and the one for reset. The one for reset, I can again see from the board. It is this button I am going to use. You can use any of these push buttons, actually, or even these two push buttons. I am going to use this center one and it is P16. P16. Now, where the clock is connected, you cannot see it on the board, the particular pin where the clock is connected. So, I have to go to the user manual. Keep it handy let me also download it and you just go ahead and search for clock in the user manual and here it's given clock sources and you can see using dedicated 33.33 megahertz clock but that is going to the processor and onboard 100 megahertz oscillator supplies the PL. So I made a mistake last time. So the onboard clock is not 50 megahertz, it is 100 megahertz actually. So that is coming to pin Y9. Okay, so you go to clock and choose 
Why not? Wait. Okay. So why not? Yes. Yeah, so you can see it is a special pin. You can see some pins are already in blue. These are the clock capable pin. So the clock signal should be connected to only the special pin, clock capable pin, because clocks are routed differently inside the chip. Again, uh, check, check back the first video if you don't remember. Clock is a special signal, so it has to be routed by minimizing the skew which we discussed last semester so only few pins are capable of that so the clock signal should be connected to one of these pins now as far as z is concerned this is a pre-manufactured board so you don't have any other choice you should always choose y9 as your clock signal source if you are designing your own pcb you can choose any of these pins to connect your clock okay so once you have done this much change the io standard also i'm again going to choose lvc was 18. so although it is given as default you should manually choose lvc was 18 otherwise bitstream step will give you an error so lvc was 18 lvc was 18 okay and go ahead and save so the same warning as before he is going to create an xtc file design constraint file so you need to give a name to that so let me call it running led again and that is visible under constraints now now when you are doing synchronous design you need to provide one more constraint to the software you need to specify what is the clock frequency that your design is running at Again, in this particular Z port, uh, the clock is coming from a crystal which is running at 100 megahertz. Again, by default, the tool won't know that information even if you choose Z port as your target platform. You should explicitly specify it. So, that is the second kind of constraint. So, the first constraint is pin constraint or location constraint, second one is clock constraint. Okay, so again, that information will be stored in the same XDC file. So you don't have to memorize the syntax. What you can do is you can go to this one, edit timing constraints under synthesis. And there's an option here, create clock, double click it. You give name of your clock, which I remember is clock. So subject, again, you give the same name, clock, or you can search for the name of the clock here. And he will list, if you don't remember the name of the clock, of course, you should be remembering it. Otherwise, you can search for the name of the clock here. He will tell you exactly what is the name of the clock here, and you can use that name. Okay. Now, since I remember, I am directly entering the name clock clock. Here, you can give the clock constraint, basically, what is the period and what is the duty cycle. We have 100 megahertz, so it is, of course... 10 nanosecond is the total period of the clock and by adjusting rise time and fall time you can specify the duty cycle so rise time 0 fall time 5 means the positive uh, level is 50 percent and negative level is 50 percent which makes a 50 percent duty cycle and this clock is 50 percent duty cycle okay so choose it press ok and again save and if you come back to your xdc file and if you open it again you will see this additional line here create clock period 10 clock waveform 05 clock okay this is a timing constraint so why this information is needed so during the implementation stage the tool has to decide how the flip-flops should be placed and how they should be routed Okay, so if you don't specify any clock requirement, the tool is free to place these resources 
whatever way he needs. But if you have a clock constraint, he will try to place these resources in such a way that your timing requirement is satisfied. That's why you have to specify the clock signal. Now for this example, even if you don't specify clock, it might be working because it's quite simple. So most probably it doesn't matter how the tool places the resources. It might satisfy the timing requirement. But when you have more complex design, uh, always you should give the clock constraint so that the tool does a, a better job. Now, if this much is done, you can go ahead and implement it. Again, previous warning, synthesis is out of date because I changed the constraint. I will go to design, run, and choose force up to date since I didn't change any payload source. Now, I will, you can either click run implementation, then followed by generate bitstream, or you can directly click generate bitstream. So, he will run implementation first, followed by bitstream generation and the process progress you can see either here or you can see it under design run tab here so you can see it's currently running uh, implementation okay so implementation basically for vivado involves three steps they are opt place and route okay so first step is opt he's trying to do further optimization to the netlist then he will do the actual placement of lets and flip flops and finally he will route them together now he's running the placement so once he finishes implementation the actual resource utilization will be reflected here see so the estimate was four lets and eight flip flop but after placement it has become four lets and 16 flip-flop it is double the number of flip-flops that we were expecting so most probably he is doing it to satisfy some most probably he is doing registered duplication which we discussed last semester again for improving fan out that might be happening so same information you can see under project summary also so if you if you close project summary you reopen it by clicking the sigma signal here sigma. and here you can see post synthesis estimate for eight post implementation this is not an estimate this is the real one four and 16. okay now everything is implemented let's go ahead and connect our okay now i have connected by connected my board let me program it so choose auto connect and you can choose program device from here and program okay so as I mentioned before the blue LED shines all the switches are off let me put three switches in on position and press this button and you can see that from the side if the button my system is on my reset and if my system is on my reset the LED starts to show the button position now once I release this button this LED should be on the off okay but what do you see you can see like all LEDs remain on always but actually we are running around I guess you remember our system is running at 100 megahertz and your eyes cannot distinguish the LEDs are running around because of the persistence of vision right so since things are happening so fast you feel like all the LEDs are always on but actually that is not the case so we need to bring the clock frequency down 
so that you can visually see the LEDs going around. So we need to change our source code. So my requirement is the LED should switch in, in not very high frequency. It should be switching at a frequency uh, at which I can visually perceive the LED states are changing. So let me put this constraint. LEDs should change state once every second. Okay, only after every one second they should change from one position to another position. Now there are several ways of doing it. So let's try the simplest one. So one simple way is to use a counter and you count enough clock cycles running at 100 megahertz so that you consume one second and only after one second elapsed you will change the led state okay <clears throat> okay so i know my clock frequency is 100 megahertz that means period is 10 nanoseconds so how many 10 nanoseconds or how many cycles you need to get one second so one divided by 10 and a second just like one followed by one two three four five six seven eight clock cycles okay so only after these many clock cycles the leds should switch or this operation happen only once every 10 to the power of eight clock cycles so let's do it so you basically need a counter for doing it okay. so how big the counter should be the counter should be able to change from zero all the way to this number so we need to find out how big the counter should be how many bits should be there in the counter so let's try to find it out so i need to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in decimal. This is the corresponding number in binary. Okay, so this is 32 bit. So basically, I need a 31 bit counter. Then only I can count until this number. So this is my strategy. I will use a counter. The counter starts from zero, it goes all the way till this. Once the counter reaches this value, I will switch the LED status. I will reset the counter back to zero and it will again come from zero to this one. Then after that, I will again switch the LED state, so on and so forth. Okay. So let's declare the counter. So we found out we need 31 bit. Okay. So what the counter should do? So I am again going to use an always block for such clock. So if counter becomes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, counter should go back to zero, else counter is counter plus one. You can either write one or you can write one tick B1. Both are fine. If you like, you can also give a reset condition to the counter so that initially when I press the reset button, counter always starts from zero. But in this case, it really doesn't matter. Maybe the first LED blinking, it happens very fast, but later, it, you know, this condition will definitely happen. Counter may have some random value, so it doesn't matter. Initially, the period may be shorter, but uh, after the first LED switching, it will definitely come back to zero. Then it will definitely change only one seventy clock. So here, I need to change this else condition because if you simply write else here, every positive edge of the clock, if reset is not pressed, do this. So we need to change it. Else if, only if counter is this, okay? Only if counter reaches this particular value, switch it. So that's it. Since you change your source code, you have to run from synthesis, so you have to go all the way from synthesis implementation and bitstream generation, or you can directly click bitgen and 
or the steps will be run by Vivado. So if I go to the project summary, let's see how my resource utilization will change. And if you wish, you can close this hardware manager here, which is used for programming, so that you can get this window where you can look at the progress and all. So currently he's running synthesis. So I have to wait for a couple of minutes until he finishes. Okay, my implementation is completed. So let me reprogram my board. Open hardware manager once again. Open target. Auto connect. And program the device. Okay, now the board is reprogrammed. Now you can see the blue button is off. Now let me try once again. So I want to turn this LED on initially, then just make one LED run around. Okay, so I turned it on. Press the reset button. This LED turns on. I'm releasing the push button. And now you can see every one second that LED is, LED is shifting right. Now suppose I want alternate two LEDs to run around. So let me turn on this one and this one and press the reset and once i release it you can see two of them are shifting around okay and that's all about this tutorial